If you're a fan of Monster Presents Insomniac, I have another investigative podcast that you should definitely check out. Stay tuned for an exclusive clip. From Tenderfoot TV, Up and Vanished returns with its third season, taking a deep dive into a new missing persons case. Host Payne Lindsay heads to northwest Montana to look into the disappearance of Ashley Loring Heavy Runner, who vanished from the Blackfeet Nation Indian Reservation. The 20-year-old, known for her contagious smile and athleticism, was last seen in June of 2017. Just two weeks into her disappearance, friends discovered potential evidence on the edge of the reservation near the town of Bath, a pair of red-stained boots and a tattered sweater. In the first season of Up and Vanished, Payne played an instrumental role in cracking the decade-old case of missing high school teacher Tara Grinstead, leading to two arrests. The second season prompted the reopening of the Colorado cold case of missing mother Crystal Ann Risinger. Now, with season three, Payne hopes to bring much-needed attention and closure to the case of Ashley Loring Heavy Runner, raising awareness of the epidemic of missing indigenous women across the country. Up and Vanished Season 3 is available now. Listen for free on Apple Podcasts, or listen ad-free on Tenderfoot Plus. Now, let's check out the clip. There's so many places out here and so many back roads, and there's holes in the ground, cracks that you can't even see the bottom where you drop somebody's body in there. You could hide a body across this creek and nobody would find it. That's the wind blew, right? My crow name is White Buffalo, Bishay Chia. White Buffalo. So you have your Christian name, and then you have your human name, your, your tribal name. His Christian name is Kerry Lance. He's 58 years old, and he's lived on a reservation here in Montana his entire life. Uh, actually, I'm short. I gotta move it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm meeting with Kerry to talk about a growing epidemic in this part of the country. Missing and murdered indigenous women. As a result of the murders up here, we started a neighborhood watch. We spent four or six hours a night out here riding around looking for stuff that somebody would think was suspicious. It's my home. I grew up here. So I grew up where I was raised. This is my home. So this is a reservation right here. You've been on a reservation since the top of that hill over there. That's a res line. We've had four buildings torched in the last two weeks and one still smoking. Torched as in? Arson. Somebody lit it up. This place was torched just a couple of nights ago. Yeah, that's the latest fire. Is this a common thing out here? Fuck yeah. And it's, it's, it's gradually getting worse. Not only are Native women disappearing, but law enforcement is doing basically nothing at all about it. You didn't see any cops. You probably won't see any cops. They're reactionary only. So right now we don't have enough law enforcement to where they can proactively patrol and try to deter the activity and the behavior that leads up to somebody going missing. I'm not an expert in this shit. You know, it's just when somebody's family says, hey, Carrie, we want to go look around at this area. I'll see if I can get some gas money and we'll go do it. And we go do it because nobody's doing it. We're looking for not just one person. We might find somebody else's remains out here. I want to see the rule of law and everybody treated fairly and held accountable. doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. I want to see the content of your character. The color of your heart is where it's at. Ashley Loring, who also goes by Ashley Heavy Runner, was last seen in Browning in June. The Bureau of Indian Affairs is now offering a $5,000 reward for information into Ashley's disappearance. The Blackfeet Tribal Business Council is also offering a $5,000 reward. All we need is Ashley to come back and to let her rest somewhere. I had to make it in my head it was not my sister and that I was searching for a girl named Ashley. Trying it in my head that I'm helping this girl named Ashley. Because every time that I knew it was my baby sister, I could not move. If Ashley is meant to be found, then there ain't anything in the world that's ever going to stop that. It will happen. The real justice is just finding her. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? This is Hello. This is Kimberly Loring Heavy Runner. Her sister Ashley went missing in June of 2017. For the last four years, Kimberly has been searching for answers to Ashley's bizarre disappearance. When she would laugh, she would laugh with her mouth open and she had these beautiful straight teeth. And she would have this laugh that was like a hyena laugh. And we all laughed the same. But she had the most beautiful smile. She was a very caring person. Just, just had this big heart for everything. This is one of the many marches Kimberly has held for Ashley since she went missing in June of 2017. So in March of 2017, I got a call from Ashley. And she wanted to come and stay with me. 
But I told her I'm going to go on a trip for three months. And if she can please wait for me. And that I really want to go to Morocco and see my husband. I'm married now, but before then, it was my fiancé. I wanted to go see my fiancé. And she said, yes, of course. She said, go. She said, go. But you're going to be back. And I said, of course, I'm, I'm going to be back, sis. Kimberly and her sister Ashley lived in Brownie, Montana, on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation, just about 40 miles from the Canadian border. Kimberly got engaged in 2017 to her now husband, and she went on a trip to Morocco, while Ashley stayed behind with the rest of her family. They kept in touch throughout the whole time, phone calls, texts, Facebook Messenger, and nothing at all seemed out of the ordinary. After around three months, Kimberly came back to Browning. I landed on June 8th at 10.25 p.m., and she never called. She didn't call. And then the next day, I saw on my phone, it said, last active 18 hours ago. I don't know what happened to her, but she waited until I got here. And then when I got back, there was no phone call, there was no text, and we couldn't find her. Ashley had been in touch with Kimberly up until hours before she landed back home in Montana. But when she got there, Ashley was simply gone. No read messages on Facebook, phone straight to voicemail, no trace whatsoever. I was very numb. I didn't know how to take it. I didn't know how. All I knew was to search for her. Just go look for her, go search for her, just go find her. Everywhere I went, I seen Ashley. She was everywhere to me. Any girl that would walk by, it was Ashley. And to me, it literally looked like her. I would look at somebody and it would just be Ashley. And then when I, I would stop and look again, that girl wouldn't even look like her. I seen her everywhere. It's been over four years now, and no one has seen or heard from Ashley Loring Heavy Runner. But it wasn't long before some twisted rumors began emerging. The timeline leading up to Ashley's disappearance is pretty murky, but I've tried my best to recreate her last steps. There were a few significant events that occurred right around the time she disappeared. Before Kimberly made it back home to Browning, Montana, Ashley stopped by her parents' house and had a strange encounter with her father. She ran into the house, closed all his blinds, and she was very upset, very upset. She said, I did something, I did something. He was like, like, what did you do? What did you do? Like, why are you acting like this? But she wouldn't say anything. And she just ran over to the blinds and she was just panicking. But she would never tell him what she did. And then when the car pulled up, he went to go look out who was outside. And she yelled at him and said, not to look out. Don't look outside. She got mad at him. And so he didn't look. And then she took off. She left. And then she never came back. That's the last time that my family seen her. He listened, and he didn't do it. Of somebody, somebody out there. And that's what hurt him all these years that when she went missing was that he didn't never look. Season three of Up and Vanish is available right now on podcast platforms everywhere.